What's up, guys? Laura Stanko here for Quick Hits, presented to you by Jose Cuervo Tequila. And I am with Juicy J, Julian Arosa. Man, oh, man, that is three in a row. And I got to believe you are thrilled with that performance. Yeah, you know, I'm absolutely stoked. At one point, I was one and four in the UFC, and now I've got uh, I'm five and or six and five now. So it's been a, a, a you know I've been successful in the later ends of my uh, career here in the UFC, and uh, it's been fantastic. And you know, it's my first time having three fights in a row in the UFC. So uh, I'm looking forward to what's next. More than successful, I would say. As we were standing here waiting for the cameras to roll, you were like, "Wait a second, that's three in a row. Yeah. I'm at toward the end of my contract. I think they're going to freaking re-sign me." I mean, for someone who has clawed and fought to be in this organization and stay in this organization, what does it feel like to know, like, not only are you here, but you're staying here and you're a freaking problem? Yeah, just being able to perform like I do in the gym here in, in the Octagon in front of everybody, you know, millions of fans on TV and my family and my friends. Uh, it's absolutely amazing just to be able to uh, walk away with wins over guys like this. I mean, Hakeem is a, you know, you know, in the top 20, top 15. So yeah. to get a win over him, he's a dangerous guy. I mean, you watch some of the guys he's beaten and uh, uh, he's done really well in the UFC. So f to get wins over th these guys is, uh, is I like to impress myself and it's, you know, it's been impressing me. Well, you were extremely yeah. impressive tonight, but talk to me a little bit about that weigh-in because, or excuse me, the walkout because I, Earlier this week, you were saying this is a little bit of a full circle moment for you. You know, things didn't go great last time you were at T-Mobile. Does it feel good to kind of cleanse that memory from this building? Well, you know, I keep telling people that I fought the T-Mobile last time McGregor and Diaz fought, but that was like that was actually at the MGM Grand. Oh, and I keep getting them different confused. building. Yeah, because yeah, T-Mobile wasn't <laughs> even around, so um, getting that confused, but. That was like the last time I was in the UFC under a big audience. And, uh, you know, five my last five fights before this was at the Apex. So it was a bit more intimate. And uh, I got used to that. So it's been really nice to uh, just kind of see it unfold. And, yeah, full circle, man. When I fought last time in a, you know, uh, on a pay-per-view, it was 2016. And I got knocked out. And, uh, and uh, Diaz shocked the world. So I wanted to redeem myself. And uh, I think I did that tonight. Nice to walk out of a packed arena with, uh, with some cheers. Oh, yeah. I wanted, you know, I wanted to get a knockout. I wanted to get a finish over Hakeem. But uh, I think I had some good moments in there. Had him hurt a few times. But he's a tough kid and uh, was able to bounce back and, uh, and, and bring the fight to me. The story of this fight really was your ability to mix in the wrestling and also stay very competitive and, and get his respect on the feet. Talk to me, though, about the grappling. Was that a big part of the game plan coming in? Honestly, you know, it, it definitely was, um, but I've watched him fight and he's tough to take down for most guys. And, you know, it, but uh, uh, the perception of people can really bother you sometimes. And I was perceiving him to be a really hard guy to take down, but he was actually a lot easier than even like Peterson and some of these other guys. And so uh, I think it was only, I think it was because he was confident in his t takedown defense. And then I, I lured him in with the stand up. I mean, there was a couple of times I had him slipping back because he was sprawling too early. So uh, I think just mixing that up really threw him off. And I was able to get those takedowns because of that. Do you feel like uh, when you got his respect early in that fight, you kind of surprised him? Oh, for sure. Uh, I think he thinks that he was going to be the better striker. But, I mean, I did the ultimate fighter. I fought Matty Baghdad, who was a world champion kickboxer or Muay Thai guy, and I beat him, you know, and it's a 100% stand-up fight. And so I have the ability to stand with the guys, and I'm long and lanky, and I was able to use that a bit better tonight than I normally do. You were holding up the number three there at the end when you, when you got your hand raised. Yeah. How satisfying is it to just have that streak and, and to be in this position? What's the, emo the emotion like? Yeah, man, you know, just this whole week I'm like, well, you know, I got two wins in a row. Uh, you know, even if I did lose, you know, you start to reason with yourself why it'd be okay to lose. And then I just kept telling myself, you know, fuck that. Like, yeah. like I, I need to go out there and fight like my contract's on the line. I need to go out there and fight like my life is on the line, which I think when I do these things, uh, I can be very successful. And, uh, and I was a little bit more measured tonight, but I was still able to mix in a little bit of that uh, willing, to not, willing to die with uh, my technique. Yeah, the patience mixed with the, uh, the willing to die yeah. <laughs> was definitely a good look. And we are, of course, sponsored by Jose Cuervo Tequila. So we have something called the shot of the night. And I want to show you a picture oh, real quick. Well, oh, no, no, no. It's a picture. I know. I wish we could do shots. It's a picture. Um, oh, talk man. to me about who is in this picture. The audience can see it as well and, and what they mean to your journey. Oh, those are all three of my boyfriends. Um, I, met on, <laughs> <laughs> I met them on Grindr. That's the best uh, answer no. ever. You know, we got Casey Holstead, uh, you know, my main coach. We have Eddie, Hall, uh, Eddie Baraka, who's my striking coach. And uh, Adam is one of my training partners. He's an up-and-coming uh, MMA fighter, but he's a savage uh, purple belt now. And, um, you know, these guys have been there, you know, from day one. And they were on a three-fight losing streak with me. 
uh, and we've been able to turn it around and really make some things, uh, make some waves in the featherweight division. So this is all, you know, that's an amazing photo. I got to get that uh, put up on my wall. Yeah, we'll send yeah. it to you for sure. That is a great picture and making waves in this featherweight division for sure. Uh, what, what's this, what are the celebration plans? What are, we, what are you doing tonight? Oh man, I'm probably going to go to the uh, Lazy Dog restaurant. It's like one of my favorite ones. Uh, it's at Town Square and you know, just chilling with my friends and my family and having a couple of beers, man. You know, I haven't had a beer in you know a few weeks, and so uh, so it's going to be a well-deserved one. Absolutely well-deserved. Congratulations on a phenomenal victory, Julian. Thank you so much. Guys, keep it locked in. Right here, more quick hits headed your way.